Hello friends, Logic X is out with a new version and we're gonna take a look at it. So this is Logic X 10.3. So this is my highlights of this update. Check it out. So this is Logic 10.3. The opening screen is the same, just it's a new look. Uh, it's a more flat design. Uh, all the shadows are taken away, uh, but I think I'm gonna get used to this very quickly. Everything is familiar here, uh, everything is where it's supposed to be, it's only got a new look. We're gonna take a look at a couple of things. One obvious thing is that they support the touch bar on the MacBook Pro. That is not a big thing for me because I haven't got the new MacBook Pro. Other thing that I think is a very cool thing is panning. Let's find a stereo track, uh, let's say. Okay, let's take this rock piano. Uh, this is a stereo track. If I just pan how I usually did it, uh, this is not stereo panning. It's actually just turning the left side a bit more up uh, and the right side down and opposite when I do it the other side. So it's actually not real stereo panning. To get this right before you had to go down to imaging, direction mixer, and you had to do the panning here. So this is an okay plugin, but it's a hassle just get a plugin just to pan. Now this all this. You right click on the pan pot and then you have right here stereo panning. So now it's working as it should. So that is a big improvement. You can also get the um, surround uh, pan part here too. The next thing is alternatives. I have always used alternatives before here when it came and that was for the entire project. So if I have done the tracking, I made a new alternative just so I can always go back if I have to change something. Now we have got the same on every single track. So um, if we pretend that we're gonna record drums, let's say that. So um, I'm gonna add five tracks of drums. But let's say that this is the bass drum. This is a snare top snare under we have the overheads and we have the room okay i want to make all these into a group and i'm going to call them drums so here you have to add track alternatives okay and also to find the alternatives you have to right click on the track configure track header and you see you have the track alternatives here. So what is track alternatives? Often when I uh, work on my own song uh, with my drummer, uh, we try out different grooves uh, on a song. So let's say that we're now recording one groove here. So we did one here and this is our rock groove. So I click here, I can rename it and I'm gonna call a rock groove. Now I want to try, we want to try something else, maybe we want to... Uh, this is gonna be our um, pop groove. And we record again. And we were very happy with that, but we wanted to listen to what we did with the rock groove. Now here comes the alternatives. I can only go back here, and then, well, here's a rock and it's changed. So this is the rock groove. And then we can go back and listen again to the pop groove. Why is this a good thing? Well, maybe it took a couple of takes to get the rock groove to set. Yeah, one more. Now this was perfect if we also uh, add in a bit of this and that. But we still want to go back and just listen to the pop groove. Well, here it is. And then we want to try to record something new on the pop groove. And you also can go back and change and do whatever you want. And this is something that 
is why I had sometimes used Pro Tools just to get this right. But now we have got it into Logic X and that is... Well, this is going to be the biggest change for me in this update. A different thing that they have added is more colors. I use colors. If you've seen anything on my videos, you'll see I always use colors. So on drums, they are red. But now you can see they have added more colors. They added new layers here so I can get more different uh, nuances of different color. I think that's a good thing. Another thing that I really like is that you can have multiple fades. Let's take the rock piano once more. And now I and duplicate it. Before I had to go and if I want to have fade on this, I had to go and take every single one of those and make a fade. Now I can just mark one of them and make a fade to all of them. Like this. This is speeding up the process a lot. I could do this before and here is how I did it before. I had to mark everyone and I had to go up here to more and I had to fade in and then I had to do the fade here and also fade out. But now I don't have to go up here, I just can use my workflow that I really like and get it much quicker done. For performance, they say that Logic Pro now takes less time to quit. And I can agree that it took some time in the last version, but it's never bothered me that much. But okay, thank you. It takes less time to quit. I think it's a good thing. Flex pitch has been improved to reduce the potential artifacts when setting notes to perfect pitch. I'm really, really glad that they've done something with this because one quick way to go to Auto-Tune and Logic is using Flex. So here we have Flex Pitch, you can easily go in here and you can change the pitch. But sometimes when I did this on vocals, I got an artifact that I really didn't like, so I haven't used it so much. I've used it on backgrounds vocal that's going to be a bit behind in the mix, but for the main vocals I turned to Melodyne. I'm gonna look forward to check out if I can do some quick tweaks here just to get the workflow speeding up because uh, Melodyne uh, takes a bit more time to get started and everything. I also work with scoring to video and now Logic Pro can import Final Cut Pro XML version 1.6 files. Uh, that's a big one for me because I work in post-production. And Logic also properly handles AAF or OMF files that contains tracks with special charters in their names. That's also a biggie because I've had a lot of problems with that. Some new thing that they have fixed that I'm gonna show, but first I have to show what I do because when I work, let's say that this is my recording session and now I'm done recording. Um, then I always go to new uh, project alternatives, new alternative. Then I will say that this is editing phase so i call this editing so now i just want to i'm very very happy with everything that i recorded so i flatten the take folders because i know this is something i want to keep and then i save it and then i start a bit editing i can say that this one i want to be shorter i'm moving this doing that blah 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 then i'm gonna make a new alternative and now i'm in the mixing stage so i'm calling this mixing the problem now is if i've done a lot of recording i've deleted a lot of things uh, the project starts getting very messy so there's a lot of things not in this project but down here that are unused files so to tidy this project, then I go to uh, File Management and Clean Up. Before, uh, it cleaned out everything that wasn't in use. But if it was used in another alternative that I have saved, it also deleted that. So I, I actually lost things. The new thing now is the Project Management Cleanup command no longer removes audio files that belong to other project alternatives. So that's a biggie. So if I clean up now, it won't affect the other alternatives in a bad way. It will only clean up in the other alternatives, but everything should be working as you want to. So when I take a look at everything, this is a project that I'm working on. Um, 
I can see that everything is really like it was supposed to be, uh, how it was. We have got the colors, so as I said, uh, this was the yellow that I used, but if I use this one, it's more bright and I easily will find the vocals. Um, for the drums, the same will be true. Oh, this is the red I'm gonna use now. It's much easier for me to find the drums and the vocals. So that's really, really good. Also, it's gonna be easier for me to pan. Here I have a stereo track. I can go right click here, stereo pan and then I can get going. It's gonna take a bit of time to get used to the new design, but uh, I know my way around here anyway. So just to wrap it up, for me, I think the track alternatives, the panning was the two biggest moves on this one. I also like the colors and the fade tool uh, that I can put fades on multiple tracks on the same track at once. Now, there's a lot more to this update than I've said, but I have to work with it a bit and I'm gonna come up with some updates on what I think about it a bit later. But this is some of my impressions of the first update and I'm really, really happy. And also, one thing guys, what I did before I did updates, I went to the Logic and then I duplicated my Logic 10.2. So. I've got Logic 10.2 right here, just if I need it, because I have clients coming and going, and if this new update gonna stop me somehow, I just go roll back right again to 10.2, that is super stable, that I'm really, really happy with. Please back up Logic 10.2 before you try to go for the new update. So I hope you like this video. Um, I really think that I'm gonna enjoy this version of Logic X. Uh, they've done a couple of things that I think will help my um, workflow a lot. So I hope you like this video. Please subscribe if you like it. Uh, leave comments down below and I'll see you guys in another video. Take care.